Here we go. 8.30, Thursday morning. All the team got back safe and sound from Israel. I heard it was a great trip. So I look forward to hearing some stories. Only story I've heard so far is something about a group of Filipinos that they prayed for for a couple hours at the pool of Siloam or si how do you say it? Siloam? Yeah, there in Jerusalem. There's a group there that want a prayer, so the team just prayed for them for a couple hours. Pretty awesome. So uh, we trust that the Lord will uh, make it stick, whatever happened in those folks' lives. We're praying that. Uh, the Lord will continue to be at work in them. Um, well, I had my jacket on because uh, I was waiting for it to warm up, and now it's warm. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're running, folks. This is a new day in the office. Amen. We're running our stream on our... MacBook Pro. That's pretty good. And Rachel's telling me that we're not having any problems. Better than it was before. That it's better. Jessica's looking at us uh, with a test computer right over here on our Ustream, and she's saying that it's, it's better than it's ever looked before. Hallelujah. So this Mac, thank you, Jesus, for Steve Jobs. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. We are still probably going to get a new camera, okay? But we've got, we're running on this Mac this morning, so we're expecting, we are expecting that this Mac will give us no interruptions. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning, and thank you for this Mac computer. I just rejoice in you for this thing and that it's working the way we need it to. Um, God, please deliver us from all the pain we've had in streaming in the past two years. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so uh, Luke chapter 5, and we're on verse 17, and uh, we'll just do this whole passage and just see what we can get into. It's a very familiar story, the paralytic, and I actually read this story, uh, Jace has a little, my son Jace, two and a half, he has a little uh, you know, kid's Bible. I read this to him out of that Bible a couple days ago, the story of the paralytic. Um, friends lowering him down on the mat. Teaching him that Jesus has the power to heal. Amen. Amen. One day, as he was teaching, <clears throat> Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. Okay. Now let's, that's the setting, and you can't skip over that. Who's there? It's, that's an important um, um, It's like, a, you know, in English, in grade school, you had to you know, what's the plot? Who are the characters? You know, you had to break down the story. I mean, you got to do the same stuff here. This is a narrative, a story, right? And it's the stories of Jesus and his life and what he did, how he was born. And so we got um, a place and we got people there. It mentions specific people. And it just, it just simply says one day as Jesus was teaching, right? So Luke has already told us that Jesus is just going around teaching. And Luke picks this one day, this one particular thing happens that was kind of out of the ordinary that I really think I need to put in my gospel. Out of all the days that Jesus was teaching, Luke is saying, i got to put this one in. This one's important. This one day, out of the however many hundreds of days Jesus sat around teaching people, I need to make sure I tell them about this one day because this one's going to be important. There's something that happened this day that these folks need to know, okay? So this one day, Jesus was teaching. And the Pharisees were there, teachers of the law. They had come from every village of Galilee, okay? So you got the Sea of Galilee. They were all just there, our team in Israel. Spent all this time there. So from every village, all of the leaders, all the religious leaders are there, okay? And Luke has told us news about Jesus is spreading everywhere. I mean, everybody has heard of the guy, okay? So you got them from all around, all the villages of Galilee, from Judea, so going down south, and then Jerusalem, all the way to, we're talking about uh, several days travel from Jerusalem up to Galilee to hear Jesus, okay? So that is the significance of who Jesus is at this point in his ministry, 
that the Pharisees and teachers of the law all the way from Jerusalem are going to take a trek for several days just to hear this guy. It's like when your favorite band comes to town, you know? You're going to go see him because you just got to see him. It's like, man, when U2 comes to town, I got a friend of mine who will buy a ticket no matter how much it is. I mean, he would, he would sell a kidney to go see U2. He bought $100 tickets one time, and he and his wife went. I'm thinking, man, they're good, but $200? There's a lot more I'd like to do with $200 than go see a, a band. I mean, that's just a little over the top for me, 100 bucks. Anyway, I don't mean, I'm not down on U2. They can charge what they want. I'm just not going to pay it. Okay, so all these people are sitting there. And Jesus, okay, Jesus knows they're sitting there. He sees the crowd. He sees who's there. He's not, he's not oblivious to it. Okay, and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Whoo! That's the setting. Uh, all right, so we got a charged atmosphere electrically charged spiritual electricity you know the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick now that's an interesting statement because then you want to ask was the power of the Lord sometimes not present well we have some examples where Jesus couldn't do miracles in certain places because there was no faith right but for some reason, in this atmosphere, on this one day, the, the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. So we got a charged atmosphere with a group of religious leaders that have traveled for days to hear Jesus. Okay? So that's the setting. So what happens? Some men carrying a paralytic on a mat try to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on a mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. Okay? So, uh, now I've heard uh, a lot of teachings on, on these passages, but one thing you got to pick up on that, that I learned from, uh, from Rick Bonfim about this passage is that this is uh, the working of a miracle. This is faith in action, right? So, the faith of these guys is, is, of these friends, is met with an action of lowering them down, a physical moving from point A to point B. And in the movement from point A to point B, God meets you in that movement of faith to perform a miracle. Miracle. Okay? So, <clears throat> there's some persistence here. We got to get to Jesus, right? When Jesus saw their faith, okay? So Jesus recognizes their faith. He said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Keep in mind that Jesus knows who's there. He knows the religious leaders are there from Jerusalem, Judea, and from all the villages of Galilee. And he says to this man who's paralyzed, your sins are forgiven. <clears throat> Why would he say that? Why would he say that? There's a strong relationship between sin and sickness in that culture in that time, right? Oftentimes assumed if you had some sort of sickness or illness, then there was either some sort of sin from you or from the sins of the father or mother that caused that. Let's go to John chapter 9. I'll give you another example right here. John chapter 9. Just... We're just going to read, I think it's one, two verses out of John chapter 9, uh, verse 1 and 2, just to show you the mindset here between sin and illness. Okay, so G Jesus is going along. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Okay? So the disciples assumed that this guy's blindness was related to sin. Okay? And Jesus, Jesus is aware 
of the connection that folks have made between sin and illness. And he says to this paralytic, this guy who's paralyzed, has an illness, your sins are forgiven. Now, the guy hasn't walked yet, but he says your sins are forgiven. Okay? So he's addressing the spiritual need of this guy first. Your sins are forgiven. In other words, think about this paralytic, right? And the stigma placed on him in that society. That this guy, either him or his family or someone or his parents or someone in his family had offended God. And so this guy is unacceptable to God in his eye. Think, think about how that guy must feel about himself. I mean, I'm just, I'm challenging you to, to try to get into what it would be like to grow up in a society paralyzed when everybody looks at you and says there's something wrong with you. God has punished you. This, your condition is essentially a result of sin and God has, has punished you. I mean, that, that'd be tough. I mean, think, how would you feel about yourself? I mean, you'd think pretty bad about yourself. And then come to this guy, Jesus, and say, your sins are forgiven. In other words, I am declaring you as righteous before God. You are clean before God. Ooh. I mean, how's that guy going to receive that? You know? My goodness. There's a lot of people in the church who think that the troubles that they go through are God punishing them because of sin or because they have or the, because they give in to temptation from time to time or whatever, right? How many times have you thought that something bad happened to you or God let something bad happen to you because you sinned? Anybody? Yeah? Allison's saying, I used to think it all the time. Mm -hmm. Jessica's shaking her head. Rachel, you thought that? Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. God's punishing me because I'm, because I'm a bad person. Right? And man, Jesus just confronts that idea right in the face. And the guy hadn't even walked yet, and Jesus is saying, without you walking yet, your sins are forgiven. You're righteous before God. In other words, there's a separation here between, between your spiritual status with God and your physical condition. I mean, he's validating this guy before God. I mean, that's powerful. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law saw this, and they began to think to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Okay? So they're offended. Because forgiveness of sins was hard in those days. You had, to, you had to do the sacrifices, you know, right? Go and offer the appropriate sacrifice for forgiveness of sins. And apparently, for, you know, who knows this guy's history or past? We don't know. We're not really told. We're just told that he was a paralytic, right? Couldn't walk, lying on a mat. But who knows what this guy's tried? Who knows how many sacrifices this guy's given? Right? And he's still paralyzed. I mean, how down could you be if, you, if, you're, if you're, the idea of yourself is that God doesn't accept me, so I'm paralyzed, and I'm trying everything I can, and God still doesn't accept me, and then a guy comes along with power like this and says, your sins are forgiven. Then the other guys see it, and they say, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. You are overriding the system. The system is you got to do the sacrifices, right? And then you can be forgiven. And if you're lucky, you get healed. <laughs> I mean, it was hard. the idea of forgiveness was hard to come by. You had to do a lot of work. So Jesus knew that they were thinking this. He says, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? Okay? So which is easier? What do you think? Which, which, is easy, which would have been easier for Jesus to say? I think it would have been easier for him to say, stand up and walk. The power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. 
I mean, in that environment, it would have been e easy for Jesus just to say, because everybody knew he could heal already. We've seen it. We've already seen it in the book of Luke. He's healing people already. Healed a leper. Um, healed uh, Peter's mom or mother-in-law. Casting out demons. All the people bringing it. Everybody knew he could heal. Okay? So there's no question about Jesus' ability to heal. It would be easier for him to say that. But Jesus chooses the harder thing. Why? Because this guy, this guy needed to be validated before God. And then B Jesus backs up his words and says, but that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Now, what does that mean? That you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. What does it mean? What is Jesus saying when he says that you may know the Son of Man has authority for, to forgive, forgive sins? It means that Jesus is backing up his words with power. Right? He is backing up his words with power, with the power of God to intervene in this world and say, listen, if I just blasphemed God, in other words, they say he's speaking blasphemy, and Jesus is saying, if that really was blasphemy, then where is my power to healing come from? Because if I'm blaspheming God by saying his sins are forgiven, then God's not with me. Right? But if, if I can say his sins are forgiven, and then immediately after that still have the power of God to heal, then God's with me, and you got a decision to make. Am I really blaspheming God? Or are you going to recognize that the power of God is with me? And so I do have authority to forgive sins. I'm sorry. So the guy gets his mat, he walks out of there. And they're left having to decide. Are we going to continue in our accusation that this guy is blaspheming God? Or are we going to recognize that God is with this guy because, because God has not taken power from him? You know, I mean, it's, it's a tough challenge. Now, what can we take from this? Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. So everybody's filled with awe, right? And gave praise to God. It doesn't really say if the religious leaders were giving praise to God, right? The Pharisees and teachers of the law. You know, maybe they were. Maybe some of them were. And then, but I mean, they got to be thinking now, right? It's got me thinking about Jesus and who he is. So, <clears throat> so what can we take from this, really? What can we take from this? Um, see, these days, we a lot of times have things backwards, where we know that Jesus can forgive sins, but we don't think he can heal. Mm -hmm. Right? We're backwards a lot of times these days in the church. We know Jesus has forgiven sins, but the healing, we, we're not sure. And Jesus is saying, I'm sorry, you can't have one without the other. They go together. If you really believe that I can forgive sins, why in the world would you not believe that I can heal? And if you believe that I can heal, why in the world would you not believe that I can forgive sins? They go together. My spiritual authority <clears throat> to forgive sins and my authority to heal go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Amen. Right? Too many Christians are, are glad to take forgiveness and, just, and then just don't, don't take the healing. They're afraid of it for whatever reason. They're afraid of that side of Jesus these days. Man, that's sad because they're missing out. They got the forgiveness thing. That's great. I mean, eternal life, saved by grace. But then they suffer in this, they suffer through life because they're not willing, willing to take the power to heal and deliver and set free. 
And um, my challenge to everyone this morning is that we would take both. Know that we're forgiven and validated before God through Jesus Christ. He has the power to do that. Amen? All right, everybody said amen, so we're good. Faye, I hope you're saying amen right there. Faye Palmer's probably watching us. She, she told me she tuned in on uh, a couple days ago. I, I, had, I had to have Jace here early in the morning for Tara to do something, and uh, Faye, Faye tuned in for that one <laughs> when Jace was here, and she said she enjoyed seeing Jace. But, um, but we got to have, you know, if Jesus can forgive your sins, he can heal you, deliver you, set you free. He's, he's doing that with, with all you guys right now. He's doing it with me every day, honestly. I get converted every day. Every day I got to wake up and get converted. I got converted when that Mac started streaming, too. Thank you, Jesus. I, I got converted. I'm ready to go to heaven now. I mean, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I'm done. So, do y'all see? Okay, so do y'all see what's going on? With, uh, with this passage here. The, inter the interplay between the, uh, what Jesus is doing, and what the religious leaders are saying, and what's going on. Do you, do you, uh, filled in there? I was I able to fill in a little gaps with this passage? Maybe teach a couple different things you hadn't heard before, maybe? Yeah? Everybody's shaking. Y'all just being nice to me, or are you serious? Okay. So I actually did some good this morning, is what you're saying. Okay? Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord, for your word. Well, that's going to be the word for today. Tomorrow, uh, Frank Appel will be here, won't he? Yes. Okay. Amen. So, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, not 8.30. And um, Mr. Frank Appel will be here. We look forward to having him. We'll be doing First Peter again. Frank is working through the book of First Peter with us on Friday mornings. Okay. Um, next Friday, next Thursday and Friday, office is closed, so no Bible study in the morning. Okay. So, we'll have Monday through Wednesday. And then, um, starting the next uh, week... We'll do Monday again, okay? Oh, yeah, don't forget about our Christmas dinner. Um, we'd love for you to come. It's December 7th at 7 p.m., and we're doing all, I mean, we're doing phone calls galore, mailing invitations, doing emails, Bible study tonight. We're going to have a sign-up sheet and a little basket where you can put your check. you got to pay if you're coming, $25 a person, okay? Not $25 a family. I had somebody try to pull that one over on me the other day. <laughs> but it's going to be a good time. We'll sing some Christmas carols, have some really good food, hear a short, short word, learn about what's going on in the ministry. It'll be a good time, okay? So I hope y'all can be there. Let's pray, and then we'll get the day going. Thank you, Lord, for your word and the power that you have to forgive and heal. Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for this day, and we pray, Jesus, that you would direct us in all that we do today, that you would help us to solve the problems before they even come. God, encourage us, lift us up. Help us to see that our minds are strong and we can do it. God, I pray for those folks watching. Everything they have to, to do today, Lord Jesus, would you, would you empower them by your Spirit to get it done? God, would you uh, renew us and refresh us in your Spirit this morning? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.